Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, testimony you gave to the Australian Senate, and I thought that was excellent. Thank and you. in it, you uh, mentioned and warned against the dangers of custodial accounts. Yes. And at that point, I realized that all of my cryptocurrency was actually locked up in custodial accounts, and by implication, it wasn't mine because I didn't have the private keys. Yes. How do you, um, in practice, use Bitcoin both as a, a long-term store of value and as something that you transact with between all the options available, paper wallets, um, potentially custodial accounts, um, other kinds of online wallets, etc. How do I personally use that? Yeah, and how would you recommend um, one actually goes about in practice using it? Okay. Um, since 2013, the maximum amount of time I have left currency crypto or fiat, on an exchange, is 15 minutes. I transact weekly, uh, sometimes more often. I don't day trade, that's not my purpose. I use it as a working currency. I get paid in Bitcoin, I get paid in Ethereum. Uh, I use these currencies to pay my bills, to live. Um, I live in the Bitcoin community. And so I have to transact. And I often have to exchange, because I can't always buy the things I want with cryptocurrencies. Um, how do I exchange? In and out. In, three confirmations, sell, ACH, or bank transfer, out. I don't even leave fiat on exchanges. I don't trust them to hold money. I don't trust banks to hold money. How am I going to trust a two-year-old startup that has six employees? <laughs> Are you kidding me? So, I don't leave money on exchanges. Now, that's difficult to do if you're day trading. And if you're day trading in this environment with these, you know, these assets of great volatility, I mean, you're a brave person. Um, now, how do I use it? Um, most of my holdings are in tiers. So think of it as warm or hot to cold all the way down to deep freeze. Right? On the cold side, I hold a small amount, honestly, because this hasn't been a most profitable um, idea, jumping into an untested technology and not getting paid for a couple of years. But anyway, I have a whole small amount of Bitcoin that I hold in deep cold storage. That means that they're held on keys that are not instantiated on any device, that exist in such a way that they're encrypted with a memorized passphrase which I have also communicated to people who might become my heirs, so that they don't get lost with me. And that's cold storage. Then I have an intermediate tier, which is on a hardware wallet, actually several hardware wallets. Um, again, pin-protected, passphrase protected, backed up with mnemonic phrases. And then I go to the warm tier. Right? I have a, a small amount of operating cash that I use for my businesses, to pay subcontractors, etc., etc. Those are in multi-signature, either multi-signature, multi-party wallets, <coughs> meaning there are other people who are required to consent, or multi-signature, multi-factor wallets, in which case I'm the only party, but I have several devices that need to sign independently in order to exercise a transaction. And finally, I have my hot hot wallet, which is in my back, po back pocket, and is at the moment mycelium. I keep a couple hundred dollars, mostly for the purpose of giving everybody a Bitcoin as if I'm the Oprah of cryptocurrencies. You have a Bitcoin, and you have a Bitcoin. Well, actually, a millibit, because <laughs> things are going well. A millibit for you, and a millibit for you. So, to, to answer your question, I have tiers. And I never keep on my hot wallet more than I'm comfortable keeping in cash in my physical wallet as fiat. Um, and I often have to move things around in order to manage it. So far, I have only lost Bitcoin through my own stupidity. Like, for example, misplacing a backup and then trashing my phone. I've lost small amounts, like less than $100. Um, I've never been hacked. Fingers crossed. I don't assume I won't be hacked. I assume I might. But as long as it's on the warm side of my wallets, I can take that risk. All right. So. Uh...